Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about selective color. So this is a technique that has been popular for a long time. It's where you take an image, you convert it to black and white, and then you bring back a single color to really emphasize your subject. I know that this uh, particular technique uh, really has kind of a mixed reputation. Some people love it, some people hate it. If you're one of the ones who love it, you're going to really enjoy today's episode. For those of you who aren't terribly fond of this technique, I urge you to take a closer look at it and see how you might be able to integrate some of these techniques into your images. There's certain photos out there that maybe you don't want to do a selective color, but maybe you can really emphasize your subject by taking color out of a certain area of an image to make your subject really the star. So I hope you enjoy today's topic. Let me go ahead and share my screen. You guys should be seeing Luminar up on my screen. I want to take a quick moment to say hello to Pat. I'm glad you're able to join us today. All right, so we have this gorgeous image from one of our ambassadors, and I think it might be taken in like Petra Jordan or someplace where they have these beautiful, amazing, miraculous um, carvings and lodgings in the sides of these rocks. And then this woman in the beautiful red dress walking through the middle. Let me show you the before image here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the visibility icon in the upper right to go back to my original. And you'll see that it's a cool image, but by making it black and white and bringing out that red of the dress, it really draws us straight to our subject and it tells a slightly different story. Now you'll notice I also added in a different sky here for a little bit more visual interest up in this part of the photo. And I'll show you how I did that as well. Bonsoir, I'm glad to see you here. All right, let me go ahead and I'm gonna click over to my edit tab first go down to my history and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here and click back to my original and show you exactly how I did this. Now with this particular image, I actually just went straight into the edit tab and I skipped over the templates. So I'm going to start here today in composition AI. I'm going to click that composition AI button and see what it suggests for a crop. And I can tell that it's taking off a little bit here on that right side and on the bottom. That's kind of blank area anyway. It's not adding anything to our subject. I think that's a good crop. I'll go ahead and hit return on my keyboard to commit that. Now let's go ahead and go down to our enhance AI. We'll pull up our accent AI a little bit. That's just going to add a little bit of contrast. Right now that's popping the color. We're not so concerned about color at the moment. I'm going to pull that up and then I'm also going to go to our structure because there's so many wonderful details in those rocks. I want to make sure we can see those. You can see as we pull up the structure, it's adding so much gorgeous detail. Okay, now let's go ahead and play with color and the lack thereof. I'm gonna go down first to our black and white tool and convert this to a black and white. Now that I've done that, I can go to my saturation tab and I can pull up on a single color and you'll see that's bringing back those red tones. Now, when I did that, it also brought back some of the red tones that were in our rock face. And I wanna go ahead and jump over to our local masking tools to fix that. But before I do, let's go ahead and address that sky first. I'm going to go over to our creative tools and into sky AI. And I'm going to go to my sky selection. And you can see here at the top, I've got a whole bunch of different collections that I've added into my Luminar AI. These ones that have LX at the beginning, these are ones that I've gotten from the Luminar X membership, which is super cool. If you like expanding your assets collection for skies and templates and things like that, make sure you check out Luminar X. It's a great value. I know it's not the perfect fit for everybody. If you like to create your own assets, your own skies, it might not be right for you. But if you want to expand that collection that comes built into Luminar AI, this is a great way to do it. So make sure you check out Luminar X on the Skylum website. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here to Colorful Sunrise 2. And what I'm looking for here is texture. The color is not really so important, but you can see as I added that, it added some great texture. But because that sky also had some of those red tones, it pulled back in some of the red there as well. So now we can go over to our local masking tool and click add and into basic. And I am going to start by clicking my saturation slider and pulling that all the way to the left. Now you'll see that that is desaturated the entire image. And what I'm gonna do is grab my masking brush and I'm gonna click on paint mask. And then I'm going to make my brush size a bit bigger. And I'm gonna start brushing that in to get rid of the red everywhere that I don't want it. And it's just some of those tones that are starting to bleed through because there's other reds in the image. So when you use those luminance or those saturation sliders inside the black and white tool, it pulls back color 
on every area in the picture that has that particular set of tones. Uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and take a look at the comments here. Wolfgang says it's a night nighttime cup in Europe. Well, maybe you're enjoying a glass of wine or um, some schnapps or something else. I hope you're enjoying your evening. Good afternoon, Russ. Glad you're able to make it today. And Pat says, if you're a member of Luminar X, how do you find the assets that come with it? Easy answer here for you. Go to your Skylum account, skylum.com, click into your Skylum account, and there is a membership tab. In there, you'll find all of the assets that have been delivered to you. So if you didn't, if you missed the email or accidentally deleted it that had the download information, you can always find your assets in your Skylum account. Um, actually, I can go ahead and pop over there here in a moment and I'll show you exactly where to find it. Let me finish this edit and then we'll pop over there and take a look. All right, so you can see that I've brushed out all of that extra red. Now, as I look at this, I notice I accidentally got in here and I got a little bit of the dress, so it's starting to look a little bit muted. What I want to do is go ahead and zoom in to 100%, move that down so I can see a little bit better what I'm brushing. And I'm going to brush a little bit more here into the foreground, get a little bit more of that red out of that sand. And then now I can go ahead and I'm going to hit the um, slant key on my keyboard and this is going to show me where I've masked. Now you'll see my red mask has actually touched a little bit onto our red dress. And I know the red overlay with the red dress is a little bit tough to visualize. But I'm going to go ahead and make my brush smaller. I'll hit the X key on my keyboard to click to go ahead and erase the mask. And I'll maybe make that a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to brush in the areas on her and make sure that I'm not losing any of that beautiful color on that dress. So you can see it, that color is actually changing a little bit as I brush this out. And I'm actually going to go up here and make sure that I'm getting detail here on her hit, her skin, her hat because I tried this ahead of time, and when I decolorized her skin and her hat, it did look a little bit odd. So I wanna bring that color back. It just looks a little bit more natural to my eye. Certainly, you can decide what works best for you and your images, but I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that her skin isn't being masked. So this is some tedious detail work in here, and you can get very detailed, very close in with your brush. You can even zoom in further if you need to. So now I'm gonna hit that slant key on my keyboard. You can also show and hide the mask here in the ellipses tool by clicking show mask. And that's the keyboard shortcut right there to show you what keyboard shortcut you can use to show and hide the mask. So now let me go ahead and click back over here to our essentials and I'll go back to fit to screen. And now we've got this beautiful selective color. Now, as I look at this, there are a couple of other things we can do to draw our eye to our subject. I'm going to go ahead and I want to darken up this foreground a bit and then I want to add a vignette. To darken up the foreground, the easiest way for me is to go into local masking. I'm going to go ahead and click on add another local mask and choose basic. And I'm going to pull my exposure down. And right now you see it's affecting the entire image. We'll fix that here in a moment. But I think right about there, and I'm paying attention right now just to that foreground, I'll go ahead and go up to where it says paint mask and instead choose gradient mask. And this way I can draw my mask up from the bottom and just blend that in so it darkens up that foreground and leads you a little bit more to our subject. Final thing I want to do is add a vignette and I'll go down to our vignette tool here in the essentials tab and I'm going to make my amount down to negative 100. I'm going to make that size quite a bit smaller. I'll go into advanced settings. Actually before I do that let's go ahead now that we have a very easy to define vignette I'm going to click on choose subject and then I'm going to place my subject right about there, I think maybe maybe there. That looks really good. And now I can adjust that vignette so it doesn't look so harsh. I'll move my feather up for a nice smooth transition, maybe even add a tiny bit of inner light. And now go back to my amount slider and pull that up and then adjust that to where it looks nice and natural. And I think right about there looks really good. So now let's take a look at our before. Oops, let me go ahead and click out of closed subject. I do that all the time. Okay, there's our before and our after. I think that turned out beautifully. Now, when I did this session on insiders.skylum.com last week, one question that I got was why don't I use, well, either the color tool or use the masking in the black and white when I wanted to mask out some of those extra reds. So for masking here on the black and white tool, if I activated this mask, 
and use that brush, it would actually bring back color everywhere. I don't want to do that, so that's why I didn't use the mask there. Where I use the local masking here to pull the saturation out in this first basic adjustment, um, I also could have done that with the color tool. The reason I chose to do that with the local masking is because if I go to the color tool, and let's say I had used that to do something else, then if I masked it, I would lose that. So a lot of times you, if you want to um, darken up the blues in the sky, you can go down here and you can manipulate some of these things ahead of time, but then you start masking, you're gonna lose that, especially if you're just trying to mask out this area here. So in order to keep my adjustments a little bit more organized, I like to do that over here with our local masking. It just makes more sense to me, but there's more than one way to get the job done. And I don't want anybody to ever feel like there's only one right way. There's, there's ways that I prefer, and I can certainly show those to you, but there's not one specific right way to get it done. There's a lot of different ways to accomplish the same task in the software. Let me go ahead and take a look here at our uh, comments. Hello, Linda from Oceanside. Well, I'm down in Santee, so Hello, neighbor. I'm glad you're able to join us today. Hello, Joe from Belgium. And Russ says, could you make her black and white to mask, then remove the black and white? Yeah, you could certainly do that. Um, I find that using the saturation sliders, if you're doing selective color, can be a little bit more precise, and it saves you a little bit of masking work, but you could absolutely do that as well. As I said, more than one way to get the job done. All right, let me go ahead and I'm going to open up Safari here on my computer and show you exactly where you can find those Luminar X assets. And I'm gonna go to skylum.com and let that load up here for a second. And up here in my account, I'm already signed in. Here's my Luminar X membership. And you can see all of the assets that I have already been delivered are right here and available to be downloaded to my computer. And if you're a Luminar AI user and you possibly had Luminar 4 in the past, you look at this section, you see that it says looks I just want to let you know that when you click on download here, you're going to get a download that has assets for both Luminar AI and Luminar 4. So if you're just using Luminar AI, you can grab the assets there. If you're using both, you can install both. Totally up to you. Hello, Gerd. Hello, Ahmet. Glad you're able to be here. And Kat, so glad everyone's joining us today. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this selective color presentation, and I hope it gave you some ideas of how you can creatively edit your photos. I love selective color. I think it's a lot of fun. And I especially love when there's a pop of red in a black and white photo. It just really speaks to me and I really enjoy it. So I hope that was fun for you guys. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. Vanelli and I go back and read these every day and do our best to answer your questions. And if you're enjoying this series, make sure you give us a thumbs up that lets our bosses know that you like to have us here and make sure that we'll be able to keep producing shows for you. So with that, I want to wish you a wonderful afternoon. Get out there, make some pictures, and have fun. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.